of the right to privacy in India. Supreme Court judges say it's a fundamental right, but government leaders don't think so. Can ID cards now be issued to everyone? And what about gay rights, abortion, and euthanasia issues? This is Inside Story. Michelle Carey, welcome to the program. Government leaders in India say they welcome a Supreme Court ruling which recognizes everyone has a fundamental right to privacy. But the government argued against citizens having privacy rights, so the verdict's being seen as a setback for Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The ruling's expected to create problems for government plans to issue biometric ID cards to everyone. And it may also open the door to legal challenges in a host of other areas, including gay rights, abortion, and euthanasia. Duncan Crawford has more. In a country of more than a billion people, the drive to register Indians into a vast biometric identity scheme has been a technical revolution. But this Supreme Court ruling could derail the ID card's expansion. In a blow to Prime Minister Modi's government, the judges say every Indian has a fundamental right to privacy protected by the Constitution. The exact opposite of what the government had argued. It's a boost to campaigners who'd raised concerns about data misuse and argued that a push to force everyone to have an ID card was a step too far. Any law made by parliament or any executive action which is taken by the executive would have to conform to, privacy, to the fundamental right to privacy which has been now enshrined by this judgment. The ID card scheme, known as Aadhaar, has long been controversial, aiming to record the fingerprints and iris scans of all of India's 1.3 billion population it began voluntarily, but later became compulsory. What started as a bid to reduce fraudulent welfare payments expanded into areas such as banking and taxation. The government says it's reduced corruption and saved billions in lost revenue. But those benefits have been coupled with growing concerns about the risks to privacy and digital security. In March, the Indian cricketer, MS Dhoni, accidentally had his ID card number published on Twitter, causing an outcry. His wife tweeting his personal information had been leaked. The principles laid down in this judgment, locating the right to privacy, not just as a fundamental right of citizens, but an inherent right of all humans, is quite historic and marks a decisive turn in the jurisprudence in India. The privacy ruling is likely to have other wide-ranging implications, potentially reshaping the way Indians deal with the government. In the area of civil rights, privacy could be argued to overturn a law that criminalizes homosexuality. And in some states, bans on the buying of beef could come up for a review. Cows are considered sacred by many Hindus, and critics argue the ban contradicts secular values. It all points towards further court battles. Responding to the ruling, the government said it will respect people's privacy, but also that what it calls reasonable restrictions will need to be observed. Duncan Crawford, Al Jazeera. Let's take a closer look at the ruling and other implications it can have on Indian society. The court found that privacy rights not only protect against interference from the government, but also non-governmental organizations. Government leaders will have to revamp their data protection policies, taking the new right to privacy into account, and it could open the door to challenges, for instance, in abortion and euthanasia issues, both of which may fall into the realm of privacy. Welcome to our guests who are all joining us now from New Delhi. Anjali Gopalan is the founder and executive director of the NAS Foundation, which is an NGO dedicated to fighting to curb the epidemic of HIV AIDS in India. Osama Manzar is the founder and director of the Digital Empowerment Foundation, which aims to connect unreached and underserved communities with the aim of increasing access to information. And via Skype, Karunanandi, she's a constitutional international lawyer. We appreciate all of you for joining us. So, Karun, I want to start with you. Was there any um, indication, I don't know, based on past rulings that the court would rule this way? Was this a surprise to you? You know, you never know the way a nine-judge bench is going to go. And they, a variety of outcomes would might have been possible. But the way the court has, in fact, ruled makes it a, seriously a watershed moment um, in this constitutional democracy. Because there were ways in which, you know, so various governments, but this, this ruling party in particular, perhaps, 
was um, sort of passing, you know, notifications and laws, you know, on what people would eat. Various governments have opposed the uh, uh, decriminalization of um, intercourse between same-sex couples. Um, the right to bodily integrity flows from, uh, from privacy. And what this nine-judge bench says, and let's be clear that nine-judge benches in the Indian Supreme Court are a rare sighting, but what this nine-judge bench has said is that any government action must be tested on the touchstone of privacy, the right to dignity in privacy, the right to freedom that is founded on privacy. And, um, you know, uh, I and others will be arguing for the striking down of uh, marital rape as unconstitutional. Um, there's an exemption at the moment that makes marital rape legal, rape, rape of husbands by wives legal. And we hope to be able to place this judgment before the court and say that, um, you know, the right to bodily integrity and privacy is front and center. And uh, we hope that this will bolster our arguments. Individual benches will be deciding um, the contours of this right. The larger right has been made clear. And also five judges have said that um, Section 377 that criminalized, uh, you know, sex between same-sex couples is not only uh, on, uh, on the face, uh, is not only unconstitutional, even though it was not before them, and even though a cure, another five-judge bench will actually decide the matter. But they also went further than that, and they said that sexual orientation as identity must be protected as um, under the uh, the right to freedom of speech and expression, so, Karan, under I, the right to, if, if I could and stop under you. the right to equality. Okay, if I could stop you for, for just a moment, because we are going to get to, to all of those issues, but further further down, um, the the potential implications. But first, I wanted to to give um, Osama and Anjali a, a chance just to react to the to the ruling in general. Osama, were, were you surprised by it? Uh, so first of all, let me start with saying that uh, congratulations to all the Indians for having this uh, uh, right to privacy. Uh, but I would like to add over and above that, this right to privacy which has been given to the each and every individual, 1.2 billion people in the country, online and offline. So there is going to be a huge challenge in terms of implementation of this and its implication from the online community and the offline community. The, India is culturally a very, very offline country. India is culturally an oral country. India is culturally a kind of country which does not know what is the meaning of privacy and therefore we don't even know what we are revealing and what we are hiding. We don't even know the implication of what we are sharing and what we are not sharing and what we should be private about. And India is also at the edge of being online. We are only 20 to 25 percent people online. We are yet uh, 1 billion uh, of the country is going to be online, the implication of data collection, the implication of uh, collecting the data in Aadhaar, and the implication of this uh, ruling, the judgment, on all the laws that we already have, from RTI to NREGA to RTE, right to education, right to information. This is going to really leave us uh, in a situation which is paradoxical. While I am extremely happy about it, and, and this is a victory for the people against the government, not usually you will see that where government also rejoice and the people also rejoice. Fundamental right means it is power to the people. And uh, in this case, it is power to the people against the government who are fighting against the, uh, the entire uh, right that has been given to the people. So what is important to watch is how are we going to put it into the life of the people right. and how they, they, people how, are going to take it. How it will practically be implemented, of course. So, Anjali, do you also see this as a victory for the people? It, the, it seems that the government is, is trying to spin it as that, as this is not a setback for the government, but do you see this as a victory for the people? Oh, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. And I'm just, you know, I've been thinking since yesterday, a couple of years ago, there was this professor from Aligarh Muslim University where uh, this horrific uh, event happened in his life. Some media guys uh, barged into his house and filmed him and outed him, and the poor man ultimately committed suicide. So I'm just thinking, and I've been, it's been constantly on my mind, suppose, suppose this judgment had been there before, would this not have happened? He would have had some recourse, even though homosexuality is still criminalized in this country, 
under this judgment he would have had some recourse so i just feel that it's i, I cannot tell you how happy i am this has happened and as earlier was said five of the nine judges on this bench actually spoke about section 377 uh falling within the ambit of 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 this law and and that really uh, the earlier uh, supreme court judgment had spoken about a minuscule my, uh, my, uh, minority and therefore uh, section 377 should stay so this this judgment actually means a lot for the community and it's going to impact the curative petition which is pending in the same supreme court now Anjali, you're you are kind of emotional about this. Is it an overstatement to say that you think that this could potentially save lives? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I no, I don't think so. I, look at this judgment. It actually gives you protection on what you wear, what you, uh, who you live with, what you eat. And if you remember, in the last few, uh, last couple of years, with this beef ban happening, uh, a few people have been killed on the suspicion of having beef. Uh, in their homes now you tell me does uh, look at look at the way lives are being impacted so this judgment is going to make a difference i feel osama this these the biometric yeah. yeah the biometric id cards is it is it this the idea of the cards itself that you um have a problem with or is it the the collection of data do you think there's a way to have bi- biometric id cards in a safe way So I'm glad that you asked this question because you know uh, biometric on one side, which is being taken by Aadhaar, uh, which is the national ID uh, uh, movement, is actually giving uh, identity and actually linking to entitlements. And citizen of the country at large is actually giving their identity with the hope that they will get entitlement. So that is where comes my being consumer. and my being whether i am entitled or not and what data is being collected by me and by the way all the data that has been collected by the government on the name of aadhar or in the name of biometric is not even matching properly in terms of the database of the poorest of the poor who is going to get the entitlement so you know there is a role play of technology there is a role play of the policy and there is role play of individual human right you know so all this at the uh, you know at the situation where are actually challenging the government that how if you are uh, giving me right to get my entitlement and taking all my information is not in a, even delivering in my name for example just about a year back about couple of 100000 people have been discarded their name from the database and they were declared dead and they were never given the pension when they came on the street with a click of a button they suddenly they were you know declared they are alive so when you are collecting such a huge amount of database there is a serious online challenging is going to take place as far as the individual rights are concerned okay. so in a country like india which is highly populous mm-hmm. and highly entitlement oriented you know there is an online and offline cultural issue is going to play a role and that is where this entire entitled uh, entire right that is given by right to privacy is going to play a huge so, role in in terms of giving power okay, to people okay let me let me bring corona back into this corona th- this argument from the government was that you know this this broad concept of right to privacy is is great from people on high but when you're talking about governing a country this populous it's just not realistic um and in some cases it's it's even a question of safety what about that argument you know the judgment actually deals with how this is not uh, just a right of uh, elite people it's a right that is essential to everyone um it's not just you know rich people who should have the right to what they eat and what they don't eat this is not discussed in the judgment um uh, but according to me there there are benches that are now dis- um, adjudicating on the constitutionality of beef bans right in particular states and you know people who were killed because they were allegedly had beef in their refrigerator um were not rich um the bhopal victims and i lead the bhopal cases in the supreme court the bhopal victims have been told that by the government that if they don't uh, sign up to uh, this id card aadhar where they have to man- possibly give their biometric data and let's be clear that it can be very easily replicated right like your iris and your thumbprint can sure. be very easily replicated and um 
it's very difficult for poor people. And so there's an additional hurdle then for not just poor people, but for people who have been brutalized by um, a lack of justice um, and, you, you know, held uh, by companies and by the U.S. and the Indian governments, right, um, for a long, long, long period. So these are people who are, you know, perhaps the worst, some of the worst off people in our country. And the thing is that when you have a situation, when you're creating an additional forcible hurdle for them to get what are already entitlements, A, and B, when it is so easy to lose your identity, because if your identity gets appropriated online, you're a poor person, and if you're illiterate and you don't have the kinds of documents that can set aside that presumption, then what do you do? How much harder is it as a poor person to reestablish your identity? Anjali, what are the next steps going forward, picking up on what appears to be this opening to, to address 377? It was declared unconstitutional a, a few years ago, and then that was overruled. So where do you go now with this opening you seem to have? Well, I think this, this would definitely help because uh, we are in the courts with the curative petition now, and there's no way that this is not going to impact uh, the... Uh, hearing now because whether we like it or not uh, the judges in this judgment have already spoken about the fact that what the what the same supreme court had said earlier about a minuscule minority and not ha and therefore not counting it they've said all of this doesn't count so i think it's going to make a lot of difference it opens up new pathways it opens up spaces for new arguments for us and i personally think that Section 377 actually will go. There's no, there's absolutely no constitutional argument to, uh, to make it stand. So I just think it's a matter of time. So Anjali, do you anticipate? And please remember one thing. We had. Uh, I, I just want to add. Sure. When when we had first filed the case, we had asked for a reading down of the law because at that time, Poxo, which is the law uh, at that time, child sexual abuse was also prosecuted under this law which now with POXO being in place, the, the situation has changed. So there's so many reasons for this law not to exist anymore. Do you anticipate um, the government pushing back against this or just accepting this ruling? I, you know, it's very hard to say, but uh, already I know that yesterday there were some, uh, some government or at least some BJP spokespeople who were talking about the fact that they thought homosexuality was a disease and that it was against the moral values of this country. So of course there's going to be some pushback. But my point is, is if the courts, I, and I, I come back to that, if the courts give the protection, let them push back. It doesn't matter. But at least we should have the backing of a law that's going to protect people a judgment that's going to ensure that they do not lose their lives and that they are secure, they don't lose their jobs, they don't get kicked out of homes, they're allowed to live with someone they want to live with. And here we're talking only about decriminalizing. We, it's not even about rights, which everyone should have in this country, right? Everyone should have equal rights. But even decriminalizing the, the, the present uh, at least a lot of people in, 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 in the political circles mm -hmm. seem to have problems with it. And all we're talking about is decriminalization. Osama, let's, let's go back to the, to the data. That's kind of your, your expertise, the digital realm of this. How might this affect how data is mined? Well, I don't know whether I'm expert on that or not, but, you know, uh, India is a very fragile, a fragile country in terms of data collection. You know, I just wrote an article saying that how, how fragile we are in data colonization and, uh, you know, uh, the individual right and the right to privacy is really going to play a role. Let me highlight here is we are not going to have an easy way because, you know, we have won this entire right to privacy judgment against the government, which is a ruling government. And ruling government has an attitude to control over your morality, over your culture, over your attitude, over your practices, which is based in 
different different uh, whether and and we are a very diverse country we are extremely diverse country in the name of caste creed religion practices and everything and there and there a government which actually wants to control everything it just recently court uh, argument had said that government had said very strongly in the argument that we want to t take control of your body you know you, your body is not your own body you know the government wants to take control of your body so with this kind of attitude when you are coming you are actually very much at war with the people and you want to collect all the information of the people god knows for what sake god knows for selling it or god giving it to the corporates or giving it to anybody but you certainly want to control over the people and when your attitude is is to control over the people i think this is the greatest weapon that we have got yesterday in the hands of the people mm -hmm. which we need to go and utilize it very strongly under the light of rti under the light of rte under the light of nrega and also continue to fight in the court uh, with the pending uh, judgment that is going to come under aadhar which is a big monster which is collecting collecting all our data kruna how Karuna, I see you nodding. Go, go right ahead. Jump in. No, I just agree with him. Um, I think that look, the devil is really in the details. This is a big constitutional right that has um, that has been clarified. You know, not given as much because the court quite rightly recognized that we come into the world with certain natural rights. All of us, everyone who's watching, everyone in this world. Um, but it is up to governments, and it is up to our governments, and it is up to our courts, wherever we might live, to enforce these rights. And um, our Supreme Court has recognized this larger chapeau right. However, the devil is very much in the details, and there will be a bench deciding the nitty gritties of Aadhaar, because the, this court has also uh, referred to compelling state interests. And obviously, privacy is not an absolute right. And um, the court has referred to compelling state interest being able to balance it out. And, um, you know, the question is that, is that a stringent enough standard? Um, and so various benches then now will be interpreting this right. And um, there, will be, there will be battles ahead to make sure that rights are going forward, freedoms are going forward and not backward. And... Um, I think it's really up to the governments, uh, you know, to this government and governments around the world, really, at the first instance, to act in accordance with universal human rights in general, international law in general, and according to their particular constitutions um, in particular. What What is the challenge? How important is it for, for a, a, in a democracy for people to know what their rights are? I think it's essential because what are what are rights? Uh, what is law even? It sort of regulates power relationships between people, between people with less power, say, you know, women, you know, some women and some men, between people of different races, different castes. Uh, it regulates power between companies and people, between governments and people. So I think, look, there are lots of studies. There's a Harvard study um, by uh, Anand Vedya on the Forest Rights Act. Uh, which looks at how forest dwellers use the rights not to go to court, but to use the strength of the law, the normative strength of the law, or what is right and what is not, the message that comes down from the law in negotiations. And that negotiation makes a big difference, right? Um, and so if I can say that, look, I am a woman, I am married, and you cannot force me to have intercourse against my will because that is rape, right? Mm -hmm. Then in a large number of cases, that will not happen. Of course, there are cases where that will still happen and then you have the law and then you can go. You know, at the moment, of course, we don't have this law. Um, and so, you know, in negotiating, I think knowing your rights means you know your power. And knowing your power is fundamental in any relationship. I ethical think. use of power and once you use your ethical uh, once you use power ethically you change you change you know the, the situation for others in the same position as you as well okay and you will have the final word for our discussion um thank you all for joining us for this discussion we'll have to see how this um all plays out as it goes forward anjali gopalan osama manzar and karuna nundi and thank you all for watching as well you can see the program again anytime if you visit our website 
aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. For me, Rochelle Carey, and the entire team. Bye for now.